Welcome to this video training. What I got in my hands, GC350, the simplest controller produced by Sitges, and I made for an MF application. Nevertheless, this device has more than 650 parameters. You usually need to change very few of them. This task can be carried out from the front panel. By the way, this is not the best way to manage the configuration of your controllers. For the best process of configuration, Sitges supply a software tool that you can freely download from our website and use. The tool name is Porky RG3. In this tutorial, we are going to explore how to use and get the best from it. First of all, you have to install the software. You can download it from our website. Connect to the website and select the download area from the drop-down menu. And then select software. In order to download the software, you have to sign up first. If you are not signed yet, follow the link, subscribe, and you will be redirected to the sign up page. Fill in the form, the capture data, and send the registration. Shortly, you will receive an email confirming the subscription. After the registration, you can access the area. Select board PRG and download it. Unzip the file and launch the installation program. Once the software has been installed, execute the program. From the menu file, it is possible to select the interface language. After any new software installation, please check for updates. This allows to keep all the parameter list aligned with new firmware release. Periodically, remember to check for updates, otherwise you risk not to be able to fully configure the new controllers. Depending on the controller, there is the possibility to select different communication interfaces. Mainly there are three kinds of interfaces. Serial port, USB and Ethernet. For RS-232 serial communication, you need a cable like the one shown in the picture. Probably, depending on the computer, you might also need an USB to RS-232 converter. As you see from the table, using a USB may require a driver installation. The driver can be downloaded from our website, as you previously did with the board PRG3. Windows XP 7 and 8 require the driver installation, while Windows 10 does not require it. Windows 8 users have to disable the driver signature enforcement before installing the driver. Please check documentation attached to the driver. By means of the communication menu, activate select communication resource. A new window will be shown, through which it is possible to select the resource to be used. The USB interface is shown as a serial port. Select the needed resource checking its checkbox. When the resource is selected, usually in blue, press the button configure in order to set the communication parameters. This activity is only required for the true serial port not for USB and the Ethernet ones. 
after the resource selection, the address should be set. If the resource is serial port, set the field serial address properly. Please left to one for USB and Ethernet. Using Ethernet, you need to enter the IP address or the name of the controller. The default connection port is 502 and do not change it unless it is required. By means of the menu file, activate select the controller. This is only accessible if the configuration of the controller is not active. From the column controller, select the controller product name. From the column subtype, select the right model by means of the part number. In the release field, write the firmware version of the controller without a dot. Or if you don't know it and you are working offline, enter a AI number like 199. The device configuration is mandatory only if working offline. In case the controller is connected, Volt RG3 is able to automatically identify the controller and its firmware revision. This window is shown after the connection if the configuration doesn't match the controller type and version. Actually, if you are working online, you don't need to select the controller and the firmware version as it is done automatically. Now have a look to the left part of the top toolbar. The first element allows us to select the serial address. This is the same parameter configured by the dialog select serial address. The connect and disconnect commands allow us to begin and end the connection with the controller. Then the configuration window activation switches to the configuration mode. It is more it is possible to read, change the controller parameter. The counter button switches to counter mode. Counter mode allows to change the controller counters. This function requires a password in order to be enabled. The clock button synchronizes the controller real-time clock with the PC. This is only enabled when a controller that supports a real-time clock is connected. Some controllers have the possibility to accept a loading of language file. If connected with such a controller, this button is shown. The read and transmit buttons are used to exchange data from and to the controller. If you need to edit data, read them first and then press the copy button in order to transfer them in the working buffer area. The default button loads the default value of the current firmware release into the working area. Load button transfer data from disk to the working area and save stores them. Print allows to print configuration. The first area on the left of the bottom toolbar shows the controller type and firmware version. The second area shows the controller ID code but only if a controller is connected. There is also an area showing information about the communication status. This area also becomes a progress bar during data transfer. The next area shows the serial address or Modbus address. The last frame shows the number of correct exchanged packets and the number of the wrong ones. The last frame is useful to evaluate the quality of the connection. Let's have a look at the main operating windows. On the left, we have a tree view showing the programming menu, replicating the one of the controller. We have then a grid view, the first column, 
called the ID, shows the parameter identifier or number. The second one shows the parameter name and the third, the measuring units. The following two columns hold the parameters. The first column holds the values read from the controller. The second holds the working buffer. Parameter values that are inside of the PC. These are the ones stored or loaded from the disk and the ones transmitted to the controller. When parameters are read from the controller, they can differ from the ones in the working buffer. These are usually the default value or the ones loaded from a file. Usually, the red parameter should be copied in the working buffer using the copy button to make the two equal. This allows to change a few parameters and transfer them back or store them in a file. Difference between the two buffers are marked by yellow background. Moreover, a yellow triangle is shown near the menu name. If this contains at least one mismatch between the controller values and the buffer ones. Above the grid, another yellow triangle is shown if there is at least one parameter mismatch among all the parameters. At the top of this area, some tabs allow to switch among different configuration areas. The tab most on the left is used for parameters, the second one for I.O. The third tab allows to set parameters for alternative configuration. With some controllers, there are additional tabs. Two of the tabs you can meet are for event and history data configuration. After the connection to the controller, the background of some parameter cell in the working buffer could become dark gray. In this case, it is not possible to change the values. The reason is that the controller password is set to prevent from changing some parameters. To change them, you must enter the password. The current level box shows the current access level. If required, enter the password in the access code box. Press confirm button and you should see the new granted access level. If no password is set in the controller, no password is required, apart from CIS's password for parallel controller. Let's see how to configure the engine sensor. Select the IO tab, analog input, and then controller. Let's configure oil pressure sensor. Set parameter 4070 function of the analog input 3 to 1000 oil pressure audio. Please configure the input for this standard sensor. The other parameters in the grid should only be used if a threshold for special purpose is required. Do not use these parameters for engine protection threshold. This limit should be set in the engine protection menu. If another sensor type is in use and it is not available in the selection list, it is possible to define a card. Select 1001 oil pressure generic for a generic sensor. Now a working area for card definition is shown. In the card definition working area, there is, on the top, a small toolbar that allows to start a new card definition. Load the card from disk and store it to disk. Some useful predefined cards are already defined. Please check them. Plus and minus buttons are used to add or remove points. Up to 32 points can be defined. Set the name you assign to this sensor in the sensor name box. The unit name here is fixed, since sensor is a pressure transducer. Set in decimal digits the required decimal precision. Insert the first couple of data 
in home and bar cones. Press plus to insert another couple of data and so on. Be careful to insert the home data in ascending value. The card definition is possible only using both the RG3 and not by the front panel of, of the controller. Another feature which can only be configured by the software for PRG3 is the alternative configuration. Such as controllers support up to four alternative configurations that can be loaded by digital input activation. Not all the parameters are affected by this function. Only a small part of them can automatically be changed. In the alternative configuration tab, you can set the parameters for each configuration you need to use. One configuration, usually configuration 1, should be set with the same values as the main configuration done inside the parameter tab. Remember then to properly configure the required digital input outputs in the I.O. tab. We have arrived at the end of this tutorial. There are some other features to see. We are going to produce a dedicated tutorial for this functionality soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.